Can you hear me okay? Yes, perfect. Hello, everyone. My name is Rita Valens. Welcome to episode number five of Women Manifesting Dreams. And uh, we are both, if you are just here, and if this is just the audio version, you don't see, but we are matching colors, right? I want to say hi to you. And then thank you so much for accepting me, uh, for accepting my invitation. And please tell us why you are in red, what you do, and what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for inviting me. Um, my name is Lynette Sorrentino, and I live in Lincoln, Nebraska. And if you live in Nebraska, Friday, you know, everybody's all about football. A lot of other states have pro football. We have our Huskers in college football. And so we have a top 10 girls volleyball team. We have the guys playing tomorrow. So it's just an easy way to wear red. And I like wearing red anyway. It's one of my favorite colors. So it's just, it's red day today. It's red day today. What do you do? Oh, what do I do? I love to help business owners, solopreneurs, small business owners. Um, and what I really work with them on is help them go from chaos to boss. Okay. So what is that? What does chaos to boss mean? What does that look like? Yeah. Well, I have been self-employed for 30 plus years. I was in a direct selling organization for 25 plus of that. And I was very blessed to be able to have I guess my cake and eat it too. I got to do all the stay at home mom things I wanted to do with my kids as I was raising them and have that quality of life. But I was also able to have a very, very successful business. And then when I moved into a corporate setting for a time, I saw so many small business owners and solopreneurs and people starting their own business who were not able and are not able to do that. They're not making enough money. They don't have any work-life balance. They're working too many hours. They don't even know how to think like a business owner because they've gone from employee to owner and no one's shown or taught them how to do that. And I know it's possible. And I really, at the, at the core and at the center is I want people to be able to get back to their center where they can be present with whomever they are with, whether it's their family or their businesses, and really to design the life that they want to live instead of just focus on trying to make a living. Wow. Uh, what is your why? My why is families. My why is families and being able to bring that back together. So the kids have good quality time with the parents um, that the kids can be involved in the parents' lives because really the kids want to be in our lives and do things with us. And I think sometimes we can get it the other way around and, and out of guilt or, or peer pressure or whatever, get too focused on all their, their activities. And sometimes the kids just want to hang out with us. And who are they going to learn from most or who do we want them to learn the most from is us, not everyone else. Um, and I think there's, and it's about that. It's about being able to have that time and parents not having to work so hard, you know, 40, 50, 60 hours a week and, and bringing it back to the center. Um, you know, there's a balance where I think we need to show our kids work ethic, but I also think there's a side and they want to be proud of us, but there's a side where we need to be able to run and grow our businesses in a way that honors our families so we can have the balance of both. So it's really getting back to center. Who are the people working with you? Or who is your dream client? You know, you the people one. That I've been working with a variety. Um, I have a lot of solopreneurs like real estate, mortgage people, a lot of realtors because they feel like they have to be, you know, on all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm working with startups because I have a heart for startups. So I've got a special uh, growth academy just for startups and it's at a low price point when I do my coaching so it's an affordable thing but also something to help them grow it's not about everybody every business coach out there looking for you know five figure clients it's like I want to help these startups get up oh my coaching. god let's talk about that I'm a, <laughs> I am a big advocate if he advocated about like we need to we need to stop going through the five figures, six figures, seven, five, it's okay, but six, seven, come on, let's like, let's have different offers. Let's have the ability to give more time or give less time, being more, I'm into high tickets, but I have low offers as well. And what yes. feels like a trendy, a trend in our, in our, in our yes. coaching yes. world that's, five figures, six, sorry, yeah. six, seven, eight. Yeah, yeah. 
you know, and I think there's a place for that. It is. And, and, and people who need that, but I also, and here's why I decided to start doing this was because one, um, no one is serving that small business owner who's entry level. And I've got Right in that group, I've got someone who does auto um, re- remote or mobile auto detailing. I've got someone in a network marketing business. I've got a lady who does, um, she's wanting to start up her own uh, in-home, you know, doing baked goods and having, you know, grow her bakery and, and, a, and a baked goods business to be able to quit her jobs. Um, you know, some of the other clients have been a construction person, some, a lady who owns a landscape business, uh, a spa. I've got a variety of people, but I these small business owners, there's so much to learn. And I want to be able to give them that safe place where they can learn a lot of things and grow. And and if you help them grow their business, you know, they may turn into that larger figure client, but let's just start helping them get going. And we're in a, in a world right now where people are doing, becoming entrepreneurs, I think for a couple of reasons, there's the great resignation where a lot of people are just wanting to get out of the corporate world. Secondly, we've got inflation um, and so people are needing extra income. And so they're wanting to develop a side business or a side hustle, or they're following a dream. There's, and when you hit a recession, people start, come out of the woodwork to start businesses, but how are they going to do that? If they, they don't have how? no clue, they have no clue. No, no. And like, there's, there's mindset that goes with that. There's skill set that goes with that. It's, um, it, there's so many things and, and, and there's some you know, things with the SBA and other organizations that teach them some of the things with how to create a business plan and how to do that, but no one's showing them how to prioritize and scale and grow that business, no one showed them how to think like an entrepreneur. And, and that's a lot of what I did in my early years in the direct sales company I was with, is I taught women how to work a full-time job, run a family and create a side business and be able to eventually grow it into that and how to organize all of that and and, and, and how to sell and organize their time and how to think that way. And so I just wanted to transfer it more into a, uh, more into a traditional business for the traditional business model. If we are talking now, can you share, you don't need to share prices if you don't want, but can you share some of uh, your offers? What containers do you have? What opportunities people have to work with you? Well, the small, the, what I call the Business Growth Academy I decided to put it at what I think is a bargain price. It's less than a hundred US dollars a month. And we do a group coaching call once a month. We have a community where you can, you know, ask questions and stuff in Facebook, you know, show me where you can get a personalized group coaching program once a week for an hour for less than a hundred dollars a month. That doesn't exist. Um, and it's all designed to help those small, small uh, business owners. And we talk mindset. We talk about uh, productivity and processes. We talk about creating culture and that culture might be just you. Do you have a mission? Do you have a vision? What is your why? Where do you want to be three years from now? All of those pieces that people are going, hmm, scratching their head. I don't know how to do any of that. Um, And if there's other things they bring to the table they don't know about, guess what? I'll bring on a guest speaker and I'll show them how. Maybe it's how to prepare meals. Uh, Maybe it's more standard operating procedures. I I know what I don't know. So I'll bring somebody else on if I can't help them. So that's one container. Um, The other container I have is primarily one-to-one coaching right now. And it's this, it's a similar model in that we focus on mindset, culture, and the processes, but obviously it's more advanced. It's digging in deeper. It's um, it just digs in deeper on on all of that because it's one-to-one for an hour and it's more advanced because that's where they are in their business. The other thing I add into it and incorporate it where sometimes people will say, well, are you a business coach or a life coach? Well, when you're working with entrepreneurs and families, it kind of overlaps in that I want to help them. I want to help them also be a great example to their families. And sometimes if the chaos is that there's no structure and systems in the household, it's not always easy to go out the door and create business and structure in your business because things are chaotic at home. So we kind of look at where, where some of those challenges and issues are with regard to the time management or maybe overwhelmed or just wearing too many hats and doing too many things. That happens, especially for women. We got, we've got so many things to do and so many pulling and, and, and wanting our time and effort that sometimes you can't get out the door to do your business because you're saying yes to everyone else. So I really take a look at where people are and say, where do you want to be? And then we fill in the gap. Very Tony Robbins, that it's a very <laughs> beautiful thing that you always say. 
Um, what is next for you? What is next? Um, next is um, growing. I'm working on some um, group coaching programs so we can have groups to be able to help more and more people. And also I'm doing some additional training so that I can continue to improve my skill set and be able to offer more and more with those coaching clients. Okay. And then at some point there will probably some, be some sort of an evergreen program. You know, I'm older, um, but I can't imagine ever retiring, but I am older. So I guess that in, in one respect gives me 30 years of wisdom and knowledge and experience to offer to people. Mm -hmm. But secondly, I want to look at a part-time moving more into a part-time basis so that when my daughter gets married in the next year or two and starts having grandbabies that I got that free time to do that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That sounds epic. How can people find you online? They can find me, um, obviously, through Facebook, Lynette Sorrentino. Um, Boss Lady Rising is my website. And also, my, I have a Facebook group that's Boss Lady Rising. Um, Instagram, LinkedIn, all of those, either Lynette Sorrentino or Boss Lady Rising is where you can find me. Tell us a dream that you manifest already. Mm, dream that I've manifested already. Many, there is a lot. Um, Bring on what's that bring bring it say it just share it you know i have to this is a little bit of, this is a a dream but it's also a little bit of a story if you don't mind no please um the reason i wanted to be i i grew up in a, in a family where we were farmers and stuff like that and i was just going to go get a job and just work etc i didn't ever really dream of being an entrepreneur but then i started seeing the corporate ladder and seeing the hours that people were working and i went how's that going to work when i get married and have kids and that's why i chose my direct sales world because i wanted to have both i wanted to be like that state of mom and court had that corporate business and my kids didn't really think i worked when they were young i mean they're 21 and 25 now they didn't think i worked because i worked from home well, then when they were very young, my daughter was six and my son was 10, um, their dad and I broke up and it was very, very ugly, very contentious. We were living in Washington state and I knew that I was supposed to move back to Nebraska. It ended up being very ugly with six figure divorces and the kids ended up staying with their dad when I moved to Nebraska. That was one of the hardest things I've ever done. I, I have, I'm on that situation at this moment, so I understand you. And I see, maybe I'm supposed to be telling this story. Mm -hmm. I, I, it was really, really hard when people would say, well, how many kids do you have? And where do they go to school? Yeah. Oh, you know, it's a my shame kids are with their dad. My it's, kids are with their dad halfway across the country. There's mm -hmm. a shame that I was carrying. Mm -hmm. But I also figured out, no matter how broke I was, to see my kids every six weeks whether they were coming to Nebraska or I was going there to see them. And I continued that relationship with them. Well, then my daughter fast forward that I'm working in this corporate job and because it was just what I needed to do after the divorce, I needed her to shift and just do something different and uh, do something financially different. So we had a little um, team getaway where we could bring our kids and my daughter happened to go with us. And this is when she was probably 15 or 16. Mm -hmm. And all my coworkers were bragging on my daughter to, about me. Um, and she also said to me, she goes, mom, did you know that when I get bored, I stalk you on Facebook? And I said, uh, no. <laughs> and she said, mom, you need to do some mentoring or coaching or something, because I watch what people say about you on, on Facebook and you're changing people's lives. Oh my God. That is so beautiful. And that you know, me cry as well. <laughs> oh, and that's what stirred me back from that corporate job to steer me back up to go and work and pursue coaching more because one that's how god made me to be and that's what my strength is but secondly it validated to me i knew i could not be the mom or the woman that i wanted to show my daughter to be unless i went through that divorce and i made those decisions because it was very passively aggressively controlling the only thing that was going to change was my address if I stayed there because I was away from my family halfway across the country and and to see her say that and 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 have that I wouldn't have been that mom that they those women people would have bragged about I wouldn't have been that mom that she would have said you're changing people's lives 
Fast forward, then she graduates from high school. She moved to Nebraska. My son decided to move to Nebraska. So through all six figures of a custody battle, through all of that stuff, I just said, you know, this is a temporary situation. I can have them the rest of my life, my, their lives. And my son moved here in 2016. My daughter moved here in 2019. And now both my kids live here in Nebraska. So I got what I wanted. It just took, but I, but it gave me the chance to grow and get my confidence and my self-esteem back and become the woman that God made me to be, to be the living, breathing example of being successful, but also still being able to focus on them. And I want to show other moms and other families, they can do the same. That's my why. You can have a thriving family. You can have a thriving business. You can have it. Someone just needs to show you how. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. I am on that journey as well. I as well did need to not go back and it was the toughest decision of my life. Yes. But my, it, it could not, if it was going to continue, I was not going to be there in their life anymore because I was going to choose to not be alive. So yeah. thank you for sharing that. I um, understand. I'm, yeah, I understand we, that it was like, mm. I, I share and I talk about this because I, I have kind of a shield about what is the opinion of other people about that, because um, I know they don't know what is to be on my skin. They have yes. no clue. And being a mom, I was a mom with 19, but I have kids with 22, but I have wow. as well kids with seven or one, one daughter with seven. So even if the other ones are teenagers, I have a daughter with seven. Yeah. So I'm going back to Europe now because I'm going to reconnect with them uh, and find a, a way to be in their lives. Yes. Because even if my ex-husband, it's not a great husband, at least in my opinion, he's yeah. a great father. And yeah, um, yeah. so it's, this is, is beautiful. And thank you so much for sharing. Um, I want to ask you, a message to your younger self. Can you send a message probably to that time? My message to my younger self is to be confident in who you are. Love yourself. Be true to how God made you. Don't look left. Don't look right. Don't compare yourself. Don't um, worry about what everybody else is thinking. I made, I was the oldest of three girls. My mom didn't have a lot of confidence and self-esteem. I made lots and lots of mistakes because I had an absentee dad. My mom was a wonderful mom, but she just didn't, you can't give your kids what you don't have. Exactly. So I made a lot of choices and mistakes because I was figuring it out as I went. And um, I probably, if I would have just trusted myself and not worried about what everybody else thought, because I've learned every time I trust my intuition, it works. When I worry about everybody else, it doesn't. It doesn't. Let's um, end this with your favorite quote. Ooh. A one. Just give us a one. Man, I've got, let me think here. Take your time. I'm going to do, because we're talking to, entrepreneurs correct mm -hmm. i'm going to come up with my own please that i that i've said not one that I've, I've got some great ones from other friends actually two one of my first mentors told me do what you do best and hire everyone else to do the rest oh that is so important have a team Build do what you do best hire everybody else to do the rest mm -hmm. secondly whenever you feel like you're stuck or stagnant in your business it's a clue it's a clue. Personal growth always precedes business growth. Mm -hmm. Personal growth always precedes business growth. And every time I got stuck and hit a plateau in my business, I had to look inside me and realize and figure out what I needed to fix inside me to be better as a person, to be better as a leader, to be better as a mom, to be a better as whatever. Maybe it was skill set, maybe it was mindset, but I had to fix me. And when I fix me, then the business would grow. Beautiful. 
Lynette, thank you so much for being my guest. Thank you so much for sharing that story. My absolute pleasure. My I, have absolute a present, pleasure. I have a present for you all going to give you in a second. I'm going to say bye to people. Listen to us. Thank you so much for being there. Um, go and check Lynette's work. Don't forget to live your dream and make it happen. And don't forget to take ownership of the result before having any clue how to get the result. Absolutely. That's, that yes, is one yes. of the secrets of manifestation. My name is yes. Kit Valent. This is Women Manifesting Dreams. And I see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.